Program Director, Mr. Sneem Karim, my colleague, the MEC for Sports, Arts and Culture in the Limpopo Province, Ms. Onika Moloi, my colleague, Speaker of the Limpopo Provincial Legislature, Ms. Pauli Bushielo, who is also a family member of Joe Maila. MEC Lusufi, in absentia, he apologized because you know he's always having emergencies. He was not only here in his capacity as the MEC, as you know, there were fellow spokespersons with Joe when Lusuf was still a spokesperson in the Department of Basic Education. The Director General of the Department of Health, Mayor Precious Matsusu, Country Director of the United Nations Aid Program in our country, Dr. Mbula Wamugabe, I can see him in the crowd there. Welcome, Doctor, and thank you for the support. Pastor Mashaban, colleagues in the media, friends and colleagues of Joe. Good morning. It is with a very heavy heart that I have to stand here today, this morning, to talk about Joe Maina. As you all know, Joe was my spokesperson since 2012 and spoke on my behalf every single day. And today is my turn to be his spokesperson. A task that I did not anticipate. I don't think anyone did. And I don't think anyone comprehends. Hence, if we seem to act out of 10, if we act, we seem to be acting irrationally, or in a way some of you may not understand, please bear with us. It is because of the gravity of the moment. I know that as we feel pain, the deepest pain is felt by Joe's wife, Matlodi, and the children, Dimpo and the, the daughter Dimpo and the son Itumeleng. May I take this opportunity to salute them and forward my deepest condolences to them. May the good Lord provide each of you with comfort during this very painful time. Since Friday last week, when we had the news of Jews passing, I've been reflecting both Jews' life and the work, as well as reading what his colleagues had to say about him. His colleagues in the media expressed shock and sadness. They commented on his professionalism, the accessibility, and his knowledge of the issues in health, as one of the colleagues, Tabi Lembele, has testified in front of us. Many commented on his friendliness and his passion for the public health sector. Many of Joe's friends and colleagues posted comments on Twitter. And Noni Mugatis, if I have to quote a, a Twitter set, consummate professional, a deeper man, you were sir. The humor you dished out always made requests for comment. It's very special. Rest in peace, close quotes. 
and Pilile Road. This is unbelievable what a guy always spoke of his children, great men to work with. As you've already heard, Joe was also a man of God. As Ndavaremiki Uyla reminded us in one of the tweeters, and I quote him, we loved each one who remind us of what the book says, quoting a scripture no matter what the circumstances. And then I Joe reminded us of Joe's last words, which he posted, and I quote them. The book says, the Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. Exodus chapter 14, verse 4. That was the last word Joe had sent as he was doing every morning. Joe's good friend and colleague, Harold Maloka, who spoke here in front of us, writing in yesterday's Star newspaper, highlighted <coughs> Joe's passion for work, his passion for golf, and his humanity. And he also noted Joe's concern for other people, as reflected in his involvement in establishing the One Million School campaign to provide shoes for poor children, to afford them the dignity that they deserve. And I'm sure we've been challenged here by the speaker from the One Million School campaign to please join the campaign on behalf of Joe and in memory of Joe. Let me turn to my own collection of Joe, who I've worked with very closely for the past five years. As you know, the health sector is a very complex technical space with high expectations from our communities as well as many challenges that are presented, especially by the quadruple burden of disease, which is characteristic especially of our country. This means that Joe had a lot of adaptation to do, both to know the issues as well as, as how the Department of Health is responding to these issues at all levels of the health sector, from clinics and hospitals districts, provinces, and at the national level. He was a communicator with no health background at all, but he was quickly able to adapt to his new environment when he joined me in 2012. As it has already been said by my colleague, the Minister of Communication, Mamulu Gukubai, Joe had to leave his family in Pologuang to join me here in Pretoria as a spokesperson. Many of us don't realize how difficult is it to be a migrant labor but still deliver. Some of us have been away from our beloved ones and partners for quite some time as we are forced by the call of duty to leave them alone. Those who never did may not understand. This is something I personally can identify with. Joe was indeed my spokesperson as a Minister of Health. But over time, our relationship stretched beyond that. Somehow, he metamorphosed or morphed into my confidante in many ways than one. At times I forgot that he was my spokesperson. He became a colleague like me on an equal footing. And at the same time, I felt Joe
you are under attack in the media. Sometimes you act irrationally. He was never scared of challenging my views and present me with a better perspective to understand how the media world work and how to approach them. He made me undertake that I won't allow the media to approach me directly for comment on any issue without going through him because he was always scared that I might be ambushed. But as life will be, I was not always able to keep this promise, especially if I become confident that I am able to respond something quickly. I will do so, but I will immediately feel very scared and guilty, and I will phone Joe immediately to apologize. That I, I, I am sorry, I had to do it, please understand. At times, I'll apologize so genuinely that if you were an observer, you would have believed he's my boss, not the other way around. <laughs> but in as far as the media is concerned, he is my boss. I, I want to remind you, and I'm sure colleagues in the media will attest to this, I never regarded Joe as a spin doctor. That's many government spokespersons are always referred to. And I'm not saying anything about the others, but I never thought of him as a spin doctor for two reasons. Number one, in the Department of Health, we did not believe in spinning things. And I could proudly say up to so far, we didn't have much to spin on. And I never forced him to spin on anything. I asked him to speak as genuinely and as honestly as possible on matters. But the second reason was simply that spinning was never his nature anyway. He wouldn't. Because sometimes he will burst in my office, red-faced and quite irritated because some spokesperson of a provincial department of health somewhere will have tried to spin a story that affects all of us and did a very bad job of it. Joe will then burst in my office and say, Minister, you know, I tried to phone his film. What makes me angry is that he's not accepting that he's destroying all of us. What do I do now? Because he has already damaged, you know, the, the public with the wrong information he has given. We'll then sit down together and strategize on how to correct, not how to spin. Because it was never our style. I have spoken to many media houses overseas, the BBC, China Broadcasting Corporation, media houses on the African continent, all through Joe. He will connect me, no matter what the circumstances are. However, the part I hated the most about him was that he knew that I hated waking up early in the morning. Joe knew that is my special weakness. I'm never a morning person. I am prepared to sleep very, very late, but not wake up early in the morning. And it has always been like that. Even from my medical school days, even during the toughest of times in the exams, I'll prefer to read up to very late, maybe very up to early hours of the morning, but not to wake up early. Joe knew this very well. But if he believed it was strategic for the department or for me to appear on very morning programs like Morning Life and Sunrise, 
where I have to go to Johannesburg, that early in the morning, Auckland Park and all the other areas, and be there at 6 o'clock, which means I must wake up at 4 o'clock and depart to Juburg at 5 o'clock. Joe will just book it first very silently, make arrangements, and then inform me and say, Minister, you have to go. I said, Joe, but you, you know that I, I can't wake up in the morning. I hate it, he said. And I will be very angry at that time. Joe will just smile and, and threaten me about how disastrous it will be if I don't go. <laughs> because arrangements have already been made, Minister. And you know, I, I usually tell you, I meet my media colleagues that I will deliver the minister and they believe me. Now you are letting me down, you know. I promise them that if they want the minister, I will deliver him. And it's true, Joe always delivered me. This media house is know. So I'll very reluctantly wake up and go. Now, I've got a very big personal problem. As I'm standing here in front of you, to speak about Joe in the past. I speak about him in the past tense. But somehow in my deepest subconsciousness, he's not gone. I'm not able to accept that. I've tried. I know he's irrational. But I said, if we act irrationally, please understand us. Because at least on more than three occasions, I caught myself doing something that thereafter breaks my emotions uncontrollably. I'm talking about what happened in the past six days. A journalist will phone me to ask if I can be interviewed. Immediately out of habit, as I've already agreed with you, I caught myself saying, why don't you phone? And I realized Joe is gone. And I feel very bad about it. But it kept on recurring. I caught myself this week, at least twice, when I'm listening to the radio or watching TV, and I believe something is said about the department that needs to be corrected, I caught myself dialing Joe's number and breaking out immediately thereafter. When I realize it's not going to be answered. For Joe is no more. I hope maybe after attending the funeral on man on Saturday, perhaps my subconscious mind will start accepting. And I'll stop referring journalists to him. And I'll stop trying to dial his number. You know, if those in the medical profession who might be here will know that we do sign death certificates as doctors quite frequently. We sign them just as a call of duty to an extent where sometimes you become inhuman about it because you sign in death certificates of people who were your patients but you didn't know. There are times when this changes, where you are unable to sign a death certificate because somehow, in a funny way, you feel that. 
when you do it, it means you readily accept or you are collaborating on what has happened. But collaborating with who? You will find yourself challenging God and deciding that you are not going to collaborate with him this time because you think he's wrong this time around. I'm sorry, Pastor Mashawana, I know. You do tell us as reverence to accept. That is the will of God. But I can tell you, there are many times when I thought, no, on this one, God was wrong and I'm not going to sign. And the nurses will be surprised that you run all over the hospital. They want to remove the body to the mortuary, but they can't do so until you sign. I felt very strongly that this one was one of those moments where I won't really decide. I'll say, God, but is there anything else you could have done than this? Oh my God, I, I'm finding it difficult to sign Joe off. But yet, because the family is far in Pulukwani, I'm the one who had to break the news to them. And because they are far, they then gave me permission to go to the mortuary and identify him. I have done post-mortems, not just identify people. I have done post-mortems. But I found myself hesitating to get into that mortuary because I did not want to convince myself that Joe is gone. I hesitated a bit at the door and tried to refuse to go in. But I realized that I had to be man enough because the, com the family was relying on me. Rest in peace, Joe, until we meet again. Thank you very much.